Hi, welcome to my channel, Read a Woman. My name is Judy, and let's talk penguin books. Um, you know, I started off with the Penguin Classics book tag, and um, when I was going through all my books, what I noticed was I had a collection of penguin books over and beyond the black, the classic black spined uh, classics some of which I do consider classics. But anyways, I thought that I would share with you what I have, and there's a few. <laughs> First off, my niece. Um, I had let her have my old, 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 old copy of Crime and Punishment. She wanted to read it, and I told her, though, it was just gonna fall apart on her, and it did. And so she very kindly uh, gave me this beautiful uh, penguin cloth bound uh, version of Crime and Punishment by Dostoevsky. Anyways, I really am treasuring that. I was disappointed. Um, if you watched the first one, you know that uh, Steve Donahue, he's going through all of his penguin wall. And one of the things he was saying on one of his cloth bound was that... Um, it was disappearing, the ink from the fabric. So I'm hopeful this doesn't, but I'll be very disappointed if it does because books are meant for handling, not for leaving on a shelf. Um, okay, now I gotta decide where to put it. <laughs> I got some books. Um, so kind of roughly in order, um, I, have this uh, nice little uh, portrait of the artist as a young man uh, by James Joyce. I think that um, I think that they make a black spine version of the portrait and also Dubliners. But I was surprised that they don't do. Um, I didn't see Ulysses on there, much less uh, Finnegan's Wake. So, I was surprised by that. Um, but, you know, I've been doing a little bit of research as well because I'm a wannabe publisher. You know, I self-published a hundred years ago and, um, and so, you know, it, and one thing Steve continually complains about is that uh, they don't put out the black spine uh, Shakespeare plays. And I found out, I think, why. Because all of mine, let's see if I can find one easily here. Of course not. Well, it's easy in an unorganized. Um, oh, here we go. So when I was in high school reading Shakespeare, I collected the, um, let's see here, they're uh, Folger Library. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think they're all Folger. Um, or Pelican. Anyways, what I noticed was in the uh, Penguin Arm, they had um, amassed like this type of play, you know, where uh, um, one side has the text and the other side has um, explanatory things um, for both words and meanings. So, um, and I think it was Pelican, but I could be wrong. Um, but I think what happened is instead of actually doing their own, they just absorbed another company, which is quite, you know, normal in today's book world they just they just do um i as i was moving books around my uh robert graves greek myths now i thought well it has penguin it does not say penguin classic so um but this is one of my you know favorite kind of books about Greek and shows the art and the myths and yeah it will be going in this room this very room so 
it's home, baby. <laughs> um, some older things. Uh, I got this uh, collection of um, writers from the other Europe. Um, uh, Tadeusz Borowski, Danilo Keith, Milan Kundera, and Bruno Schultz. Um, have a little collection of their works um, and this I bought it through um, like quality paperback book club and um, yeah I've always hung on to it with Milan Kundera I had hoped it was the unbearable lightness of being but no it was another one laughable loves <laughs> but uh, yeah I mean you just when you go through your library you find a lot of these um, Robertson Davies, The Manticore. I had that for college class. Um, and these two as well, D.H. Lawrence, uh, Sons and Lovers, and Women in Love. Now, I actually kind of like, you can see some sun damage, but um, I actually like D.H. Lawrence. I don't love him. I don't think he stands quite the test of time but I think I think he's worth reading and I wish I'd looked up the poem but the one poem that always made me really appreciate him he talked about how if as humans we were human in the same way that a lizard was a lizard something like that and that I could have it totally wrong but what it really made me think was how our sense of um, how awkward we are as humans how we have such a very difficult time just being in the moment and how we just don't we're so self-conscious and um, Anyways, it's it just it reminds me how um, how it, how wonderful it would be if I could just be what a human is supposed to be, just like a lizard or a dog is who they are, and uh, so yeah, just for that I've always appreciated them. Um, then let's let's get serious. I knew I had and I've picked these up pretty much used my collection of PG Woodhouse and this is not all my collection this is just what I have in the uh, penguin um, hot water Smith journalist <laughs> um, oh summer lightning uh, see the Empress there yes Empress of Blandings, Smith in the City, Ants Aren't Gentlemen, and that most certainly is true, and The Indiscretions of Archie. I really love P.G. Woodhouse, and I think he, I know, I know there was a beautiful little collection of hardbacks that were published like within the last 10 years or so, which I have none. <laughs> um, but I would think Woodhouse would be on the cusp of needing to be in the black paper, black spined uh, classics. Um, oh, here's a couple more. I just happened to pick up, um, I guess it's always Bernard Shaw. Okay. Um, St. Joan. I, uh, I don't know if I've read that particular one, but I always have really appreciated uh, George Bernard Shaw as a, po as a playwright. He, he gets a lot of things right. And then the other one, um, which I've tried to read, but I have not made it through. I doubt if I ever do. Um, Henry James's uh, The Golden Bull. I saw the PBS from many, many years ago and thought it was lovely. And while I, I love an author who can fill a paragraph with one sentence, um, it got to be a little too much. <laughs> um, my other, I knew that I had these uh, were um, 
John Mortimer's uh, Rumpel. I'm a huge fan of the Rumpel series. I encountered it first, though, in the um, television series, the great PBS series. Oh my gosh, I forget the uh, actor who played Rumpel. Brilliant. She must be obeyed. It's like, yeah, so good. Um, Rumpel and the Bailey. The Trials of Rumpel. <laughs> um, Rumpel and the Golden Rule, which I thought was very interesting, uh, going to Africa. And the whole different set of societal expectations, etc., etc. Um, and Rumpel's Return. Bloody keeps coming back just like an opera singer. <laughs> And then also, uh, although it's not the orange spine, it's a penguin, uh, Summer's Lease by John Mortimer. I enjoyed it. It wasn't great. Um, but I thought he had one interesting idea because he had this old man, the grandpa, grandpa or uncle or something, who they, they were all a family went on this vacation together and he was acting inappropriately, the grand, the older guy. Um, and the question was, you know, why? I mean, you know, don't you want somebody more your own age? And he's like, well, I was always attracted to the hot, you know, 22 year old. So even though I'm 72, I'm still attracted to him. You know, and it's like, well, maybe, I don't know. I don't know, but I thought it was interesting. <laughs> Then we go to um, some newer stuff. This uh, Jack's book, an oral biography of Jack Kerouac by Barry Gifford and Lawrence Lee. I was surprised that this was Penguin. Um, and, uh, you know, I've, I liked On the Road. I mean, it wasn't it wasn't the or text of, you know, things, but it was good. I enjoyed it. And I've always had a little bit of interest in Jack Kerouac, but also uh, Allen Ginsberg, um, William S. Burroughs, you know, that whole scene that they were all part of at one time. So anyways, um, yeah, I, I picked this up somewhere along the line. Um, this was sent to me, but... New Aging, Live Smarter Now to Live Better Forever by Matthias Hallwich with Bruce Mao Design. And it's a very interesting book talking about how as we age, um, and it has all these wonderful, this wonderful graphic art in it as well, but how to age in place. You know, it's definitely something I'm considering. And living in a single home, single home, well, of course, I'm not rich. I don't have multiple homes, but, but I live in suburbia and I live in a house. And while I share it with my brother, it's not like I'm in a complex where, you know, you have more people to interact with. And so I see, you know, after kind of reading this, um, it's shown me that really I've got to structure my life so that I have stimulation and um, ease and cut costs where I can. And uh, anyways, very good book. Good job. Good job, Penguin. Another one I was surprised about, Argo. <laughs> Yeah, I know, movie cover, um, but my uh, book club, we were reading it. It's called the Movie Book Club. <laughs> so we try it every once in a while, at least, to combine the two. And I was surprised to see this was a penguin. Uh, another book club, uh, The Mockingbird Next Door, Life with Harper Lee by uh, Marja Mills. I didn't like it. I didn't think she got an in-depth look at um, Harper Lee really outside of learning more about her sister 
but you know, I more came away from this thinking, what was really, what's really the story? And I don't think we know. I, we do know she published, you know, To Kill a Mockingbird, a brilliant classic uh, that immediately became a classic. Uh, that we do know. We do know that she was talked by a publishing company into publishing uh, Ghost Set the Watchman or something like that, uh, just here recently in the last few years, which did not have critical acclaim outside of the fact that it was the first, the second Harper Lee to come to print. So who was Harper Lee and what did she spend all that time in New York for? It can't have all been anonymity. I mean, was she a closet alcoholic or did she have a drug problem? Um, was, was she gay and just couldn't come out about it? I mean, she was living this double life, but there was no way this woman ever got close to what that life was like in New York. And the life that she was leading in that small town in the South, I forgot where, I'm not going to look it up, but, um, was so isolated, you know, it's like, yes, it's, it's hard having success. I don't know it personally, but I, I understand it intellectually. Um, but but there's, there's more to that story. And hopefully somebody tells it, but it will not be this woman. She was too busy trying to uh, uh, get the rights to publish. So I know, harsh. <laughs> and then I was also uh, interested to see that uh, Becoming Jane Eyre um, by Sheila Kohler, uh, was a little penguin. So, um, I enjoyed that. I did. Um, one woman's, uh, take on, uh, Charlotte writing Jane Eyre and, um, and her relationship with her father in particular. So, um, yeah, I thought it was a nice take. Um, definitely got me all the Jane Eyre feels. So anyways, that's my, and I'm sure I have more, but things are in a mess. <laughs> I was going to say flux, but no, just a mess. They're not organized. So um, there's probably more, but that's what I came across. And um, yeah, you can't go wrong outside of a couple, <laughs> but you can't go wrong with the penguin. <laughs> anyways, hope you're doing well. Stay safe wear your masks, and we'll talk again soon. Bye.